Welcome to part 7 of repairing and rebuilding a very large horizontal model steam engine. Part 7 covers the reassembly. As reassembly is basically the opposite of disassembly, I'm not going to go into great detail showing me screwing the thing back together. Starting with the base casting, it's finely painted and it's looking quite good. This is painted with a brush using precision paints. I try to always use precision paints, I really like the way that suddenly the brush marks disappear. The colour though doesn't look right, it's Caledonian blue, it's just a trick of the light that it makes it look a different colour. This is the governor painted with the same paint. This is filmed inside so it looks entirely a different colour. You'll have to trust me on this, it's definitely Caledonian blue by Precision Paints. Away from the painting, it's time to look at cleaning up the metal parts. I would normally use wet or dry sandpaper for this. I don't always like to polish things, and wet or dry sandpaper used carefully gives a good finish without rounding the edges. Once you've cleaned the metal with wet or dry sandpaper though, don't forget to oil it. Here you see the crosshead guide bars in position on the cylinder. And these guide bars need to be a very smooth fit against the crosshead. When the motion bracket is in place at the other end, the crosshead should slide very smoothly from end to end. And there must definitely not be any tightness for the full length of the travel. Here you see me fitting the piston. Everything's all nice and oily. It's quite important to put plenty of oil in as you assemble these parts for the initial run. Especially since a lot of the metal parts have been immersed in cellulose thinners, so they really are very dry. Here I'm fitting the piston rod into the crosshead. The piston rod is a push fit into the crosshead, and then you have a taper pin that you tap in from the other side. This is a great way of holding the piston rod, and it follows full size practice. A word of advice though, it's a good idea not to just hammer this pin into the crosshead without it being supported. With this engine, I'm using a piece of pipe fitting underneath the crosshead to support it while I tap the pin into place. And you don't need a massive big hammer, just a small one, gentle taps, the thing will seat properly. Try not to let the hammer slip into the crosshead. Be very careful doing this. It's so easy for the hammer to slip into the crosshead itself and leave a mark. So now the crosshead is securely pinned to the piston rod. And when we look at it, it's looking good. But there is a problem. And I could say, oh, I've only done this for the video, but I've forgotten to put on the gland. So this is not going to work. Call it a senior moment or just basic stupidity, but the gland which should be on the piston rod is not. Here it is, the offending item. It's a little bit like wiring the old rubber type plugs. Then you realise you forgot to put the cover on the cable first. Anyway, I haven't shown it, but what I had to do was tap the pin out, put the gland on the piston rod and then refit the crosshead. And it turned out to be a good thing really because I had to turn over the crosshead. It was a better fit altogether and it's now really smooth end to end on the crosshead bars. The gland of course is not supposed to wander up and down the uh, piston rod like this. It's supposed to be fastened to the cylinder but I haven't done that yet. I need to pack the gland and I'll show that on the next video. Carrying on with the assembly, time to put the big end into place on the crankshaft. Nothing really clever here, just make it all line up. Put the brass on, tighten the bolts. Don't over tighten the bolts, it's never a good idea. You don't want to distort the brass. They're called brasses, but it's really gun metal. Brass would be useless. It would wear out in no time at all. After the big end is secured to the crankshaft, time to turn the attention to the small end to go into the crosshead. Again, coat it in oil first, so we have lubrication for when the engine first runs. Most important not to lose any of the parts and not to have any parts left over. So it's a good idea to keep them together in a plastic box. The gudgeon pin is now a good fit in the hole and needs slightly tapping into place. Needless to say, use a piece of wood to tap the parts into place. Don't use the hammer head, otherwise the parts will get mashed up. Test that the crosshead moves very smoothly up and down the guide bars and the piston sits in the cylinder where we need it to be. To do this I've temporarily fitted the flywheel which makes it easier to turn the crankshaft. And yes it's very smooth, no binding. This engine is going to run very well I would think when it's finished. 
But for now, thanks for watching and I hope it's been of some use to you.